Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. I believe that, like, I want to... I want to help guys get better. And so to do that, you have to have players who want that, who want to wake up every day and just work and grind. And so um, that's all really important to me. Uh, if we have the core of our team that's like that, we'll be hard to beat. Side for Walker, skip past left side. Bryden Baca Wiltshire puts it up. Got it! Three ball. CJ Wiltshire, another CVA three. That ball was just popping around. Just great movement. Shelly to throw it in baseline left. Into Markowski. Back to Jazz. Three. Butter you! Betcha! In the deep left corner, off the screen assist from Markowski. Walker in the back corner will bring it across the line with a pass to Gary. Gary attacks the rim. Jamble with the right hand. A tomahawk dunk by Gary. And the Huskers with a 41 to 24 lead. And there is our first Interstate Bank play of the game. Ford Series for Nebraska. Hybe around a Mendelssohn screen. Deep right side, Izzy. Ford's three. You betcha. That's a Central Valley egg three from Izzy Bourne off the assist from Hybe. Stand up, Husker fans. This is a great win for Nebraska. They knock off previously undefeated Kansas. Their second win over a top 20 team this year. And the Huskers in three overtimes defeat Kansas 85 to 79 tonight in Lincoln. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. Well, Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome into Sports Nightly. Man, I forgot how to do this. It's been a while, we've, but we've got a full two hours coming up for you here tonight. I'm Jessica Cootie. Greg Sharp is off, but we have a full two-hour show coming up for you tonight and a full two-hour show coming up for you tomorrow night as well. And lots to get to tonight. Coming up on the show tonight, we have Jeremiah Searles going to join us. We have lots of football news to discuss and talk about, so he's going to join us here in a little bit. We also have Allison Widener going to be joining us and um, the Husker women's basketball fan favorite, the star out of Humphrey, Nebraska, unfortunately suffered a season-ending injury, but she stops by in studio to give an update on that, and, and the coaching staff telling me she's still going to play a very important role for this team this season, so we're going to hear from her. And then also, while we're talking signing day and these new recruits, we're also going to get a different perspective on it. We've heard how important the speed and the track part of it is to Matt Rule and his staff. And so there's a couple of Huskers that have committed to Nebraska with the intention of playing both football and also running track. So uh, Britton Emanuel is going to join us and give us the track side of things. So that's what's coming up on tonight's show brought to you by Currency. Currency makes financing quick, easy, and secure for heavy, for heavy machinery, ag equipment, trucks, trailers, and more. Visit GoCurrency.com for details. But before we get to any of that, we haven't had a chance to talk about a couple of new additions officially that have signed on with the Huskers. Of course, we had signing day back on December 21st and announced the addition of 31 new players, 27 scholarships for walk-ons, and then I think it was the next day or two days later, Ben Scott, the O-line transfer from Arizona State, who will have two seasons of eligibility remaining. He also signed on, but then we had the Under Armour All-American game on Tuesday, where two more players announced that they were headed to Lincoln. Ethan Nation, defensive back out of Roswell, Georgia, 5'10", 160, one of the most coveted defensive backs in the nation. Was Under Armour All-American, as just mentioned, four-star. His finalists were Auburn, Houston, and Ohio State, but he had 50 offers, over 50 offers to play college football. So here is defensive backs coach Evan Cooper on what Ethan Nation will bring to the Huskers. We see him more as a corner. A corner, uh, yeah. Yeah, to nickel, mm -hmm. exactly. Uh, he's quick, he's fast, he's explosive. He's got great ball skills. If you watch him, plays both ways. You can see his quickness when he's trying to make people miss. Another one of those good people, you know, good people, good athletes, just trying to get it all together. Now, high school All-American at that. How Absolutely. special is that for a kid to have that honor? It's great. It's great for his community, his parents, himself, the school. His teammates, you know, that's it's like a teammate award. He's one of the top defensive backs in the nation in this class. What What is it about him that sets him apart? Uh, I think he's really competitive, you know, just getting to know him. Uh, I think he attacks football the way the great competitors do. So I think that might set him apart. He's also extremely talented again. But, yeah, I think the way he attacks football and approaches football. 
So Evan Cooper was absolutely instrumental in putting this class together since Matt Roll was hired. He was one of the guys that came with Coach Roll on his uh, first day here for his introductory press conference. And Coach Roll on signing day really just uh, was so complimentary of Evan, how he's a film junkie and can find guys that a lot of not a lot of a lot of people hadn't seen before. And so, yeah, absolutely a huge part of what Coach Roll is going to do here in Lincoln, and also bringing those recruiting classes here. To Lincoln. So, also wanted to give you this perspective from him ab about recruiting and, and how he attacks that, and also being able to recruit again because he hadn't been recruiting the last couple of years that he's been in, on Carolina staff. Here is Evan Cooper on uh, his approach to recruiting. How much fun has it been for you to get back to recruiting? Man, it's been good. You know, I'm like a, fil a film junkie, so I'm just banging through recruiting film and building relationships with the future Huskers, and it's been great. Yeah, that's one thing every player that's played for you, committed to you, has talked about. That's one of the first words is relationships. And a lot of coaches say that, but what goes in the, into that for you? How do you build those relationships? Uh, probably it's, it's really organic, you know. Uh, that's what I like to do, whether I work with you or work for you or coach you. or I, that, That's just one of my things, you know. I just feel like I need to know people on a different level than just strictly work or player coach. You've been with Coach Roll for a very long time. What <laughs> is it a, about him that you wanted to stay by his side for so long? Oh, I, I believe in Coach. I believe in his message. I believe in his actions. I, I've seen it done. You know, he's proved, proven to me over and over that he's the real deal. So uh, you kind of want to attach yourself to greatness. And, I, and he's given me an opportunity too, and I'm grateful for that. So. You guys have uh, brought together a lot of recruiting classes together, yeah. too. What goes into that when you're, you're going through that with him and, and how you guys plan together what guys you want to bring in? Uh, so, as you've said, I've been with him a long time. He has a type. I understand his type. I try to find those guys uh, that he'll like, and he usually does. And we just have pretty good chemistry, along with the rest of the recruiting staff. We just we kind of know what he wants. Yeah, what has it been like working with this staff? A lot of you guys have been together too, not just you and Coach Rule, but a lot of these other guys you guys have experience with each other. Yeah, to be honest, I don't, I don't want to overstate anything, but I think we have the best recruiting staff in the country. You know, we have a bunch of versatile guys, and we've worked with them before. They've also proven time and time again the success. You know, we're excited about who we have working for us, we're with us. And that was Evan Cooper, the defensive backs coach here at Nebraska. And, boy, they have gotten right to work on the 2024 class. And it's a big weekend this weekend. I walked through the stadium earlier. They've already got uh, decorations set up again. And, and Ethan Nation talked about how he came on his visit here just a few weeks ago, right before signing day, and how much he felt at home and how much he loved this coaching staff. And so you heard um, Coach Cooper say it right there. He thinks he's got this, that Nebraska has the best recruiting staff in the nation. And speaking of that, another one of those guys that does a great job recruiting is Terrence Knighton. And he helped bring in or recommit Cameron Linhart, defensive lineman. He's out of Staten Island, New York, but played at IMG Academy in Florida last season. 6'3", 245. And Linhart was a guy that had committed to the previous staff and then decommitted, and um, but then recommitted after getting to know this new staff. And as a senior, 21 tackles, seven tackles for loss, a four-star recruit. His team last season only allowed just under 30 three rushing yards a game, 96 passing yards a game. They had 30 takeaways. Of course, no doubt Cameron Linhart was a big part of disrupting things up front. He chose Nebraska over Georgia Tech, Maryland, Penn State, and Rutgers. Those were his finalists. And so here is Coach Knighton on Cameron Linhart. So he's one of the guys that, you know, were committed originally to the old staff and then decommitted. And, you know, we did our homework, made sure we stayed on top of him, kept recruiting him, and uh, made him comfortable with the new staff. And he always loved Nebraska. He was hoping that, you know, it was a coaching staff that he could get close with. And um, we did a good job with him. And uh, I'm excited about him and his family uh, being from Staten Island, New York. And, um, you know, so he has the up north roots there. So we're excited about him, a dynamic guy who can also play any position, a uh, great motor, great kid, and excited about him. So we've talked a lot about this, and we're going to talk even more about it coming up with uh, Jeremiah Searles, but Coach Roll has, I think, eight 
former players on his staff right now, Terrence Knight, and one of those. And so he talked about after his career in the NFL when he wanted to get into coaching, why he wanted to join Coach Rule's staff. So here's more from Terrence Knight and working with Coach Rule, a guy he played for, but also why or what he hopes to bring here at Nebraska. Well, the thing about football is, and the thing about life is all about relationships. And when Coach Rule first came to Temple my sophomore year, he was actually my position coach. And uh, me and him developed a bond that, you know, we still connect to this day. And um, once I was done playing football in the NFL, I got into coaching, and he's a guy who um, mentored me throughout the process. So um, when I had the opportunity to coach him in Carolina, I jumped at it. And when he called me, said he was taking the job here, I jumped at that right away. So. What do you tell kids too? Because you have a, a unique perspective. You can tell them what it's like to play for him. So what do you what do you tell them when you tell them what it's like to play for him? Um, high energy guy, tough guy, um, but he's a people person. Um, he cares about the kid first before anything. Your personal life, you know, you, where you come from, your background, everything about that, and that's just as important to him, you know, as you maturing as a man as it is a football player. What's your philosophy, coach, in the defensive line? Gritty playmakers. We're going to do everything the tough way. We're going to make plays, but at the same time, we're going to be tough. We're going to be in our gap. We're going to play with our hands. We're going to get after people. Tell us, what is a dancing bear? Describe a dancing bear. Um, a dancing bear is just a, a a big man who can move with the best of them. You know what I mean? Um, you know, I, I pride myself on being a dancing bear. When I was a player, uh, I was described that way, so I look for guys that are similar. You know, a big guy that you don't think can chase you down. You know, you look at a bear, big body, but uh, they can move and they can hunt you. So that's what we're going to do. And that was Terrence Hyten. Love that. Dancing bear. Andrew laughed back there a little bit on that. Can't wait to see that and, and what this coaching staff brings and what Terrence Hyten brings to the defensive line. Really enjoyed getting to do all of those interviews, those sit-down interviews with this coaching staff. If you missed any of them, they're all posted right now on our YouTube page and then also on our social media, the Husker Football Nation uh, Twitter page and also Facebook so you can watch those full interviews with those guys out right now. We're hoping to line up a couple interviews with these new newest Husker signees with Ethan Nation and Cameron Linhart. So we'll get to work on that and, and keep you posted on that. But we'll continue to try to hear from these new Huskers as they arrive here in Lincoln. All right, going to work in our first break here on Sports Nightly. 402-413-2400 if you want to be a part of the show with a phone call or a text. The Sports Nightly hotline is brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime. With 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned, you can always find what you're looking for with Woodhouse. Coming up next, we're going to hear from Jeremiah Searles and his thoughts on all the latest Husker football news. Keep it right here on Sports Nightly. The LEAD Center for Performing Arts is celebrating 33 years of bringing the world's top artists to the University of Nebraska-Lincoln campus. Upcoming shows include Hamilton, Yo-Yo Ma, American Ballet Theater, and Alanis Morissette's Jagged Little Pill. Get tickets at leadcenter.org. Greatness doesn't happen overnight. It takes time, focus, and dedication. At Shelter Insurance, we understand that because we put in the hard work and dedication for decades. And that commitment is paid off with award-winning customer service for your auto, home, and life insurance. Visit shelterinsurance.com and find an agent to help you choose the coverage you need. Shelter Insurance. We're your shield. We are your shelter. Shop Woodhouse Buick GMC first for your next SUV and experience the difference. We offer a full lineup of SUVs so you can find the one that best suits you and your lifestyle. The GMC Terrain and Acadia offer the perfect blend of tech and safety on the road. Or discover the style, comfort, and cargo space of the Buick Enclave. Plus, we make it easy to shop, finance, and purchase in-store or online at WoodhouseBuickGMC.com. We are professional grade. Families who travel to Nebraska's only Ronald McDonald House are facing extremely uncomfortable situations. Their child is sick in an unfamiliar city, unsure of how to handle it all. But when they walk in the Ronald McDonald House, they can find comfort in the little things. A quiet moment away from the bombardment of beeps and buzzes in a hospital room. The taste of a home-cooked meal. A calming voice saying it'll be okay. 
Help us provide the little things that make a big difference. Support a one-night stay for a family in need by visiting rmhcomaha.org slash Huskers. Here's Greasel, deep left corner, Gary's three, got it! Saturday, Husker Hoops doubleheader action begins with pregame coverage on the men's side against Minnesota at 10 a.m. with tip-off at 11 a.m. with Kent Pavelka and Jake Muehlheisen. On the women's side, pregame coverage with Matt Coatney and Jeff Grish begins at 12.45 p.m. with tip-off at 1 p.m. against Rutgers. Tune into your local affiliate or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Agriculture is the economic engine of the Midwest. At Acres Equipment, we dedicate ourselves to making that engine run smoothly. We supply our farmers and ranchers with quality John Deere equipment, parts, and service. We also deliver the most advanced technology and precision ag strategies to help them farm today and for the future. Acres Equipment, solutions for every field. Every single day, Central Valley Ag works with our farmers to feed the globe. When you raise food corn for CVA, you can earn an additional $25,000 per quarter section. That's $100,000 more profit for every four quarters you farm. Do the same work, raise more profit. Our planet is hungry. Together, we feed it. Learn how you can get up to a $5,000 signing bonus with a value-added grain contract at cvacoop.com. Central Valley A, the official co-op of Husker Nation. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. At CHI Health Clinic, we believe healthcare should be personal because knowing your provider personally makes appointments more comfortable, more productive, and more meaningful to your overall health. Get matched with a primary care provider based on your personality and lifestyle using CHI Health Clinic's My Provider Match. Take the survey at myprovidermatch.com to find the right provider for you. Getting healthier starts by getting personal at CHI Health Clinic. Farmers Mutual of Nebraska is proud to support Husker Athletics. Having a competent teammate beside you makes all the difference when it comes to protecting what matters most. With a proven track record of dependable coverage, unmatched financial strength, and a prompt claim service team right here in Nebraska, that's insurance kept local. Visit FMNE.com to contact an agent for a quote today. Farmers Mutual of Nebraska, always alongside you. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores, where right now, kids can eat free. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer. Supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres solutions for every field. Welcome back to Sports Nightly. I'm Jessica Cudi. I just recently got a chance to sit down for another episode of the Sideline Slice with Searles, Jeremiah Searles, joining us. And we hadn't been able to chat since before all of the coaching staff editions since before signing day. So we had a lot to catch up on. So it was a lengthy conversation. Here's a portion of it right now. Here's the sideline slice with Searles. 
Yeah, you know, I, I, that is one thing I think that it, it's not good nor bad. Um, it's just a surprising move by me how young the staff actually really is, especially on the offensive side of the ball. You know, I think there's something to that. You're even seeing it a little bit in the NFL with the young head coaches, right? The Zach Taylors, the Sean McVeighs. You know, there's something about the connectability, I don't even know that's a real word, of <laughs> allowing these guys to go into these high schools and to connect with these kids. I mean, you might be talking to an 18-year senior. I'm pretty sure our wide receivers coach is 23 years old, 24 years old. So, you know, he's only five six years older than these guys you know so there is still that relatability factor of hey I, I was in your shoes I know what you're going through I can help with that um, which can I think can really help in our recruiting at times you know so that's something that I'm really excited for the approach that coach rules taking there um, you know and you can tell they're hungry you know when you got a young guys and the other things you know they probably don't have a lot of families they, they're not married with a bunch of kids so it's really easy for them to just drop everything get on the road and go and do whatever it is to, to grind on the recruiting trail because that's that's what college football is right now. It's bringing top-level talent. It's bringing top-level guys into your program, which then you, it translates over to success. So the harder these guys can grind on the recruiting trail, the bigger the process and the bigger the payout's going to be in the fall. You know, not only have they just been in their shoes, but they also been in their shoes playing for Coach Rule. He's got, I think, eight former players on his staff that played for Coach Rule. Uh, so how big is that, too? Just, hey, these guys understand what, it's, what the expectations are from the top. It just seems like a staff that's a thousand percent on the same page because they've either played for the guy in charge or some of the other you know uh, coaches that are on staff or they've worked together before they came here you know I think there's another piece of that Jessica it's a credibility you know when you're recruiting players everyone's gonna say the same thing no coach is gonna come recruit you and be like you know I'm really just not that trustworthy <laughs> you know I'm really just not gonna help develop you that much you know everyone's gonna say yes you can trust me yes I will develop you I'm gonna help you get to the NFL but it's really a judgment thing at the end of the day to be able to I believe this guy do I not believe this guy but when you have people that have a played under him played for him coached with him before and then they have now come with him to this new place there's kind of an instant credibility that comes with that because you have to think, if you played for Coach Rule and he sat in that same recruiting meeting that you're in and he told you the same things, but he didn't live up to those standards, you're not going to come back and coach with him. Right. Right? You're not going to come back and go into business with the guy. Mm -hmm. So there's a credibility piece there of like, no, Coach Rule promised me these things. He promised my family these things. He lived up to these things and probably exceeded in some of these things. And that's why I want to come back with him. You know, so I think that's a great pitch. I love that there's former guys that are with him because it just really helps paint a clear picture to families, to kids, to whoever's involved in these kids' recruiting processes of what Coach Rule is and what his plan is moving forward. We talked about some of the staff additions uh, last time on the podcast, but we ha did not know an offensive line coach at the time. We now know the offensive line coach, and it's the, the one holdover from last year's coaching staff, Donovan Rayola. And, uh, you know, it, and it, as much, um, you know, hate and whatever uh, questions that the offensive line got last year, mm -hmm. Coach Rayola had a, a lot of tough, he was dealt a lot of tough cards last season, and it was a, a group that he didn't recruit and came in late. And so I guess overall your your take on uh, uh, keeping on coach Rayola. yeah you know I, I understand um, why there would be certain people that outcry that this was dumb not a good idea I can't believe we kept him you know but you have to take a bigger picture approach to it you know you talk about a guy like coach Rayola who he had his starting left guard in, in Nuri get suspended before the season even begins you lose your center to the NFL draft you lose your starting left tackle to an ACL early in the season. You're shuffling guys around. You're moving dudes around. You lose your head coach three weeks in, who was the tech, he was the offensive coordinator. We can say he would him and Whipple were calling plays together. She was shifting offenses, you know, and you can. It's really easy to say, well, someone has to fall on the sword, and it's always the offensive line. Always. Why the easy is that? Point. Because there's five of us out there, and it's really easy when things aren't going right to be like, yeah, well, you can't do anything with the offensive line. You know, like, it's super easy. So I think that a little bit of he kind of fell into that trap of like, well, it's his fault. You know, but I think the fact that the I heard a lot of reports that players went to bat for him to Trev and that players went to bat for him with Rule when they got hired, you know, that speaks a lot of your trust in your coach and your belief in what he's doing, how he's doing things, how he's developing. I mean, he's shown that he's recruited some good offensive linemen this year. You know, so there's a lot of promise to him. And, you know, to be fair, you got to give a guy more than just a year to try and figure it out, in my opinion. You know, you got to give a guy, you can't just implement your, your system and your techniques and everything in one year and expect that 
uh, an entire offensive line that was pretty much piecemealed together and put together by duct tape to be able to succeed. So, you know, I think this year will be a lot different. You get some pieces back, you get some of your players back, but I'm also excited to see how some of these young guys continue to develop over the last of the spring and into training camp, seeing what some of those depth pieces look like, too. Yeah, and you talked about this, too, about your time when you were here. You had the same offensive line coach. How hard is that for an offensive lineman to, to have – keep changing offensive line coaches. It cannot be easy. Like you, you would think that, that that's, again, that's a spot you want some continuity of who's developing you and, and all of the techniques and all of that. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, it's, it's not as hard as you think to just switch techniques. The, the hard part is you don't ever get to develop in that technique. You know, you kind of become this jack of all trades, master of none which in turn really doesn't help you develop as a player at all. It's like, yeah, I have all these different ways that I can set, but I'm not great at any of them. Yeah, I'm, I have a lot of different ways that I can run inside and outside zone and how I drop my foot or where I put my hands or all those things. I've been taught a lot of different things, but I've never got a chance to year after year after year keep doing it, keep doing it to where I've mastered that technique. You know, where it doesn't matter what the defender does, he has to beat me because I'm going to beat him every time with my technique. And when you see guys having to switch coaches and switch schemes and switch different, are we downhill, are we outside zone, are we short setting, are we seven step dropping, all that stuff plays a factor in an offensive line's development. And then you're also talking about position change guys. Hey, Turner, go play guard. Hey, Turner, go play tackle. Hey, like move left, move right. Hicks, and you've played center before, right? Like you just had all these moving pieces that it's just hard to allow and, and really think a guy is developing or not developing based off of that you know so a little continuity to that offensive line a little more consistency of where guys are playing finding them a home early allowing them to stay in that home develop through the spring through the summer into training camp so when they hit the ground running in week one or week zero whatever it is we play next year they've had a ton of reps at that position that five has starting five has had a ton of reps together and they can just keep growing and getting better throughout the year and building the depth too right you and I talked about this going into the season last year in the mm -hmm. fall about you can't just have five guys you got to have right eight to ten so mm -hmm. and I think that was an, a big issue too with, with this group this year is that there just wasn't enough depth in that room you you had some guys that were solid going into the season but when guys start going down and you don't have the uh, you know the right personnel to be able to replace that's a problem too yeah, I mean, if you got to have eight to ten guys that are starter ready, you know, and not everyone's going to be able to play to the level of the starter, or else they'd be the starter. But the thing is, you can't have a disastrous, giant drop off from starter to backup. You know, it's got to keep getting closer and closer and closer in that gap between starter and backup so that if something were to happen, it's not like everything falls apart at the seams, right? Like, yeah, you expect a slight drop off based off of who the guys are, but you can't have this monster gap. And I felt like that's where we were at last year. You know, when us, we were always, you and I talked about a concert, like we are one injury away from being in big trouble. And then one injury would happen, we'd be like, yeah, there it is. It's rearing its ugly head right now in front of us. You know, so just continuing to build more and more, to continuing to go more and more into the depth and development from inside the program, like we talked about, is just going to continue to get better and better depth. Well, I know for a fact the guys that he coached here, a lot of them, um, they love him. They love playing for him. And then the recruits, uh, a few of them that I just talked to, are big fans of his, too. So uh, that had to play a part of it in keeping this group together, um, you know, knowing that that's the guy that, that they want to play for, right? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, if you you don't want to have guys jumping in the portal and leaving and doing all that, so, you know, if you have your positional coach back, I'm sure that's going to help you retain majority. I know we lost banks to the portal, um, you know, but majority of the guys that were here last year, majority of guys that played a lot of snaps last year, you know, um, are all coming back. So, you know, that's a big piece of the development, a big piece of the congruency and all of that put back together. Speaking of that, like what what's next now if you are coming back and you're about to come back from Christmas break and, and what, what does it look like now if you're a player? How do you uh, attack whatever's next to be able to to be able to maybe earn a spot in, in spring? Oh, it all starts in the weight room. You know, summer, winter, winter conditioning is upon us, my friends, and it is the hardest time. It's the hardest training of the year. You know, you have nothing coming up until spring ball. You've got probably like eight to ten weeks of just absolutely grind fests in the weight room, gaining strength, gaining muscle. Then you're still working on your speed. You're not really conditioning at this point because it's all just about strength gains and muscle mass gains. So, you know, this is a great time to start implementing what your weight room is going to look like. You know, what program are you going to want to run? And I say this all the time. The head coach is obviously the tone setter for the entire university and the program at times. 
it's the weight coach that fosters that culture. Yeah. It is the weight coach and the weight staff because they're the ones that are with this team the most. They're the ones that don't have time limits on when they can be on the field with them, when they can't. They are with these kids five to six days a week for 52 weeks out of the year mostly. You know, so these are the guys that foster the culture and really show what it's going to be. So I'm excited to kind of see how they run their program. I'll try and maybe sneak around in there and see what's going on. Um, you know, but I'm really excited to watch these guys grow in a different type of environment than they had in the last regime. You know, to that point, so before I came here when I was at Oklahoma, we were working on a, a documentary on Bob Stoops and his tenure there. And a lot of those players, the year that they, you know, they turned it around pretty quickly and, and won the national title. And they all said that, yes, Bob Stoops is, you know, was a big part of that and he gets a lot of the credit. But it should be like 1A and 1B, the strength coach, Jerry Schmidt, who actually was a product of Nebraska, graduated from here, got his strength and conditioning training right here where it all started, right? That he was just as big a key, if not, you know, equally as big of a key as what Bob Stoops did to that turnaround and laying the foundation for winning the national title and then what Oklahoma, what that program is today. Yeah, I'm telling you, you can, it's a program setter. It's a program changer. I still think James Dobson was the best strength coach I ever had at any level, college or NFL. And a lot, I, I attribute a ton of success to because of the way he did things. I attribute some success to him as to why I'm successful in my professional career outside of football. You know, the way that you show up on time, you do things the little right way. You know, there's so much of that. He, he helped me become a man. You know, so those guys are so much more than just football, but all that stuff that he helps teach you on how to develop as a human being and as a man equivalates to wins and equivalates to good habits. That is Jeremiah Sorrells as a part of the latest Sideline Slice presented by Valentino's Pizza, the official pizza of the Huskers. And that was just, again, a small portion of a very lengthy conversation with Searles. We talked everything. We didn't even get to get into anything here on, the, on Sports Nightly tonight. Signing day and the additions uh, of the new Huskers to this signing class. And then also he talks college football playoff, how disappointed he was in Michigan, all of the above. So uh, check it out. It's out right now on our YouTube platform um, and also our all of our podcast platforms wherever you listen. So again, Sideline Slice, Valentino's Pizza. And yeah, we got to work in another break here on Sports Nightly, but check out the Husker Extra mobile app for the team at Lincoln Journal Star. It's the best place for everything Husker sports. Search the App Store for Husker Extra and download today. Your stories are all around you, and in the Lincoln Journal Star is where they come to life. Go to LincolnJournalStar.com slash story. Subscribe today and read on any digital device. We're back with more from Source Sightly coming up right after this. The name on the mailbox may say Smith, Myers, Baumgartner, or Johnson. But when you choose to plant with Rob Seco, it includes your name too. Making you a stockholder in a company that's invested in you. With the simplicity that makes us easy to do business with. Relationships that bring more to the table. The technology, traits, and genetics that take on local conditions and people with the know how to use it. And Rob Seco, the only stockholder we listen to, is you. Today's play of the day comes from Nebraska. We pick it up with the local sports announcer at a Nebraska lottery retailer. Dave enters the store. He makes a move to the checkout counter. Looks like he's going to pass. Yes, he's passing the clerk a few dollars. The clerk takes the handoff and spins around. It looks like he's placed the scratch tickets on the counter. And now Dave has them in his hand. It's the old scratch Harusky. He scratches left. He scratches right. Oh, my. He's done it. Dave has scored a bundle of cash. Play is good. Go play. Odds vary by game. Here's Greasel, deep left corner, Gary's three, got it! Saturday, Husker Hoops doubleheader action begins with pregame coverage on the men's side against Minnesota at 10 a.m. with tip-off at 11 a.m. with Kent Pavelka and Jake Muehlheisen. On the women's side, pregame coverage with Matt Coatney and Jeff Grish begins at 12.45 p.m. with tip-off at 1 p.m. against Rutgers. Tune into your local affiliate or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app, Go Big Red. Your story, it lives in River City, where you can enjoy a metropolitan vibe and a small town feel, where we set the standard for service and looking out for one another, where there's so much more than steak in our thriving food scene. Your story is the story of Omaha, told by those who live it and love it. Whether that's helping you keep up with the Cornhuskers or creating the content you crave. And here in the Omaha World Herald is where it comes to life. Omaha World Herald, where your story lives. Touchdown, 
Nebraska. If you're doing business in Nebraska, the best way to connect your organization with the excitement surrounding the Huskers is through a partnership with Nebraska Athletics. You can take your business to the next level by reaching loyal Husker fans through in venue signage, digital and social media, radio advertising, and more. Got it! Join the Husker team today and email partners at huskers.com to learn more about opportunities to connect with Husker Nation. That's partners at huskers.com. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he is so cold. The furnace is out again. SOS, he screams, and calls SOS Heating and Cooling, his favorite Luxair dealer trusted since 1950. With Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS to the rescue. SOS, SOS. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Dear gas prices, go take a hike. Toyota is the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. The Toyota Hybrid lineup brings efficiency with power, savings with style, and top-notch tech to keep you connected. Not to mention plush premium interiors and the most advanced Toyota safety features. So, now you know who you're talking to. Toyota, the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. Toyota. The brand with a hybrid or electric vehicle for every driver. Toyota, the brand that helps save you money at the pump. Now, let me ask you a question, dear gas prices. You really think you can stand in the way of the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years? <laughs> think again. Toyota Hybrids. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Based on manufacturer estimates, see why 2000 through 2021 sales. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarbon Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Row townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres, solutions for every field. As we welcome you back to Sports Nightly. Of course, uh, the news around the world that everybody has been paying very close attention to. And if you're watching the Monday Night Football game, a, a very scary moment as DeMar Hamlin goes down, has to be resuscitated, went into cardiac arrest, and really shook the entire football world. And in fact, Jeremiah Searles, who we just heard from, was had played in up in Buffalo and, and was had a lot of teammates that were still around there, a lot of the staff that was working for the Bills. And so he went into detail about that also in the podcast about, you know, how hard it was for him to see that and, and giving a perspective on that. But we do have some good news that has come out today that he is awake, that DeMar is awake. And in fact, the, one of the first questions that he asked was in writing, but he asked his bedside nurse was if the Bills won the game and so he said he when they told him that he's been 
sedated for two days. He was surprised, but uh, one thing that it, the doctor said was it's not only that the lights are on, it's that he's home. So um, all the cylinders are firing right in his brain. That was the doctor there up there. Timothy Pritz, who is helping taking care of DeMar Hamlin at the Cincinnati Medical Center. It's, um, man, it's just a scary story, but it's also been so heartwarming to see the outpouring of support and, and so thankful and glad that prayers have been answered and that he's come out of it and still a long way to go, but and thoughts and prayers continued to head up that way to Buffalo and, and to DeMar Hamlin and his family and the Bills family, but um, certainly good news coming out today that he's alert and awake and... Um, yeah, so we are thankful for that. We, we also did get news, too, that the NFL does not plan to reschedule or play that game. They're just going to figure out the scenarios, and I think that's still a work in pro progress. Nothing has been reported as of yet, but still a lot to figure out because there was a lot on the line with that game and, and playoff seeding and who is going to be the number one seed and getting into the playoffs and all of that. So uh, we'll, I um, guess, stay tuned for that and, and see what the NFL decides to do with that. All right, we're going to take another break here on Sports Nightly because on the other side of this break, we've got a special phone call lined up for you. So Dorothy Lynch, home style and light and lean dressing, endless flavor abilities. Keep it here on Sports Nightly. At Nebraska, our people will always be our greatest asset. Day by day, donors give our teams the best opportunity to compete and win through their generous donations. Our vision for the future is ambitious and requires help from those who want to see Husker athletics excel at the highest level. Go big and join thousands of other Huskers Athletic Fund members with your gift today at huskers.com slash donate. Does your business need quick, competitive financing for heavy machinery, trucks, or other equipment? Currency is here to help. Whether you're financing construction equipment, farm equipment, trucks, trailers, or any other big ticket item, Currency will automatically find the best rates. Currency facilitates loans for up to $500,000 with repayment terms up to 72 months. It's fast, easy, and free to use. Visit GoCurrency.com and apply today. More Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic care first. Studies show that chiropractic is safe, drug-free, and the most effective treatment option for back, neck, and joint pain. It can also help patients of all ages reduce migraines, improve mobility, and maximize athletic performance. Keep the entire family healthy and active with natural, cost-effective chiropractic care. Find a chiropractic physician near you at nebraskachiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic. Do you want your date to wait for your interlock device to let you drive? Your kids to ask why you have an ankle bracelet? Or your boss to see your criminal history? Do you want to miss important life events because of house arrest? Get a ride. A DUI costs more than you think. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Bank of the West is offering the first checking account designed for climate action. It gives back 1% of the account's net revenue to the planet at no cost to you. Shows you the estimated carbon impact of debit card purchases. And there's no minimum balance required. Learn more at bankofthewest.com slash 1%. Additional conditions apply. Member FDIC. In America, the future belongs to everyone. So we designed the Ford trucks of the future for everyone. Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 45 years straight. Made for performance and capability on and off-road. Because the trucks of the future aren't designed for a few. They're built for America. Ford F-Series. Drive one today. Based on 1977 to 2021 calendar year total sales. The Sports Nightly Hotline is brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime with 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned. You can always find what you're looking for 
with Woodhouse. 402-413-2400, the number to call or text. And speaking of, joining us, a very special guest on the Woodhouse Auto Family Hotline. Uh, I say a special guest, but it's a very familiar voice, and you might have been wondering why we didn't have a ticker tonight. So we welcome in Tim. He's producer Tim on our caller ID screen, but Tim Malab <laughs> is joining us. Thanks for calling in, Tim. I will not um, I will not rain on your announcement parade. Go ahead. Take away. You have the floor. Well, I guess I guess I'm Tim from Omaha now. I, I, I don't know. I, you guys have to update that title in the, in the system there, but... Uh, yeah, after a, a really, really fun and exciting uh, year, almost year and a half uh, with the Huskers Radio Network, um, I, I have uh, taken a new job up in Omaha, Nebraska. Um, uh, it was a tough decision to make, but it was one that I had to do for my career. And uh, with that said, I'm going to miss every second of working with you guys and uh, being a part of the Huskers Radio Network crew. And um, I'm, I'm really excited to see uh, what happens here going forward with you and, and with everybody at the HRN. So um, I, I, uh, I'm already, it feels weird. It feels weird being a caller for the first time. So I guess uh, long time listener, first time caller, uh, I guess you could say. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> That's a good one. Well, I mean, we appreciate so much everything you've done for us here at Oscars Radio Network. I mean, you joined. We were just launching this thing, trying to figure everything out. So, absolutely, it was a huge part of, of getting this thing off the ground and, and contributing to that. But we haven't had any shows. We've had basketball games. We've had coaches shows. We've had, you know, best of shows. So we haven't, you didn't have an opportunity to right. announce to Oscar Nation. I'm like, people are going to start asking. Crypto King in the chat was probably going to ask here pretty soon where you were with the ticker so wanted to get that out there and and uh let husker fans know i'm sorry i greg wouldn't give me the final standings of the game pick oh, but no. i i don't think you finished that one out very good no no i didn't but i'll say this i i do think i got the national championship right i'm pretty sure i picked georgia tcu you uh, did you, I, you did get tcu Okay, so I got that part right. So I will take credit on that one. But yes, I, this was, uh, I, I don't even get to be, unless I do it maybe through the YouTube picks next year, uh, I don't get the revenge tour like, like Andrew did. So, uh, Crypto I'll will sign you up the on the YouTube picks. <laughs> he will get you on the email list. You can join in. You can be a part of the picks on, on the YouTube chat. I, I just want to know that. what happens if people call in and want to talk hockey? Oh, man, that's. See, that's a tough part. We're gonna I, I don't know, maybe maybe I'm gonna have to teach Andrew a few pointers, uh, maybe pass something along to Rucker, see if you guys can get like a, a segment with Rucker McGroarty. He was just uh, up uh, for Team USA. They finished with the bronze medal today at World Juniors. I was watching uh, his stats. He's putting up some nice numbers up there. So uh, other than that, man, I'll have to drop a line in the chat room, I guess. I guess that's going to be my go-to now um, and try to, I don't know, suggest I do that. <laughs> You're going to have to send me cliff notes like once in a while yeah. of, of what's going on. Hey, you, you're a producer for volleyball, women's basketball, a lot of um, incredible games. Do you have a favorite game over the past year that, that you were able to oh. produce? Oh, that's a really good one, man. I think the Texas one for volleyball last year in the final four there. And, uh, man, even that Kansas game, uh, just a couple weeks ago here, I, I just, I just saw your interview with Allison Widener on the bus ride home. And, uh, I felt so bad for her and she's been one of my favorite players to watch. So I was really happy that the Huskers were able to get that one for her and, and just because of the stakes of that game. So, uh, those two would probably be right at the top of my list in terms of the games that I've been a, a part of and worked and um, just in terms of the excitement too, you know, it, as much as we were produced as I was a producer there, um, you're still kind of, you know, obviously a fan behind that all. So you got to keep your, your, uh, your head and be a professional, but uh, you know, you we were rooting for them behind the boards and those were two of my favorites for sure. Absolutely. What people really want to all know is what it's like working with all of our talent. So Matt Coatney, John <laughs> Baylor, Kim Pavelka, um, yeah. everybody. Get, what's it like working with those guys? Give us a quick <laughs> breakdown of each each guy. Oh, oh, each one. Wow. Okay. Well, JB, I have always said this, and I mean this in uh, the most flattering way, because Michael Scott is probably my favorite TV character of all time. I lived in Scranton, Pennsylvania, so I, I, I get extra uh, uh, perspective on that. Uh, but JB is kind of like the real life Michael Scranton, uh, Michael Scranton, Michael Scott. Um, he's one of the most fun personalities to work with. 
Uh, when you're talking about Matt Coatney, he is one of the most exciting broadcasters. Um, his, his enthusiasm is infectious. Uh, Kemp Pavelka is uh, a legend. You know, he's a guy that, uh, hey, he, he, uh, he got me jealous about living up in Omaha, I guess. So I guess he kind of sold the, uh, sold me the, on the move up here indirectly. He didn't know anything about that, but, uh, he is one of the most fun people to listen to with just how excited and animated he is and the history he brings. Uh, and then Greg, Greg Sharp, I mean, he's the voice of Huskers football and baseball and, you know, worked hard, side by side with him for a year and a half. And that's been a, a ton of fun. And, you know, just getting to know uh, all the mannerisms that Huskers fans uh, have, have seen and listened to for 15 years behind the scenes is, is cool, too. And just working with you has been a blast because uh, I don't know anybody more tenacious and more passionate about what you do than you. So uh, you are tremendous what you're doing and, and getting the story. I was just, like I said, I was watching the Allison Widener interview on the way home. So, um, that, that is, you know, been really fun to be a part of. So it's, I'm going to miss all of that. And of course I'm going to miss Andrew back there, uh, pushing the buttons with him every day and, uh, getting to talk sports, their life, everything, um, you know, and I want him to do the takers. I don't think he's going to take me up on that, but I want him to be a part of that uh, on air stuff. Uh, and, uh, you know, it has been an absolute blast. So, uh, it was, uh, you know, a tough decision to go. It wasn't uh, out of any ill will. I, I, I think it was just a really, really good opportunity I couldn't turn down. So uh, working with everybody at the HRN has been uh, really special. I tried to get him to do the ticker today. He wouldn't do it. <laughs> so we had to just figure it out. And then I said, well, let's call Tim and let Tim call it. Yeah. Let's let Tim call in and do it. But no, he, he would not do it today. So we're going to get him to do it <laughs> at, at some point. Which call will live rent free in your head of all oh. those guys that you just talked about? As far as like a call during a game? Yes. Ooh, oh, that is a really good one. Run, big fella, from Greg for, for <laughs> the question the answer. I think that one, just for whatever reason, that's the first thing that popped in my head. A couple of JB's game-winning calls when they were, you know, going to the national championship last Call year. Call the grandkids, that one. Yes. Call the grandkids is a classic. Um, and by the way, I got to put in Lauren Cook West there too, because I, I would get yelled at. I, she'd find me and, and get mad if I didn't give her a shout out. She is also one of the best pros. Uh, and she has taught me more about volleyball than anybody. Um, so I wanted to slip that in there before I got in trouble. But, uh, uh, man, uh, Cotney is, is some of his three pointers are, are classics. Um, we have about 200 highlights of those threes just from this year alone. Um, some of the things he did with Jazz Shelley's threes earlier this year, that overtime game she took over, I think those were some of my favorite of his. Um, I think Slamola from KP just a couple weeks ago. Uh, I believe it was a Jawan Gary dunk. Um, uh, correct me if I'm wrong back there, Andrew, but uh, that one was right at the top for me. Um, and, man, I, that, that, that's – off the top of my head, those are the ones that come to mind. I was going to give you the last couple of minutes for you and Andrew to talk about the Steelers, but you just bragged on the play-by-play -play guys too long. I, you, there's not enough time oh, no. for you guys to brag or oh, talk about the Steelers shuck. and all the you, – you two and Damon, I don't know how I ended up working with three Steelers fans this year. But, uh, Steelers Nation. What? I said Steelers Nation. It's everywhere. Well, we got about a minute and a half, Tim. Thank you so much for everything. Final thoughts for Husker you, Nation? Well, wait, this won't be the last. Uh, so I'm sure you'll call in. This is the first time call, yeah, but you, oh, yeah. you'll call in. You'll be on the chat. We'll, we'll hear from you. Yes, yes. I think the future's bright and go big red. That does, that's my closing sentiment. I love it. I love it. Well, hey, Crypto King said, hey, Tim, by the way. Yeah, oh, boy. <laughs> hey, Crypto. I, I, I'm gonna, I won't, I'll be in the chat, Crypto. I'll see you. <laughs> Oh, Tim will help. Thank you so much. Thanks for calling in, and um, best of luck with everything. Appreciate all that you've done here with for us here at the Oscars Radio Network. Thank you, Jess. Appreciate it. All right. Appreciate Tim uh, calling in and joining us. Tim from Omaha. His name was Producer Tim. Now it's Tim from Omaha. But, yeah, I wanted to make sure that we got him on the air and, and let him announce that his news, that uh, he'd no longer be here. You wouldn't be hearing him on the ticker uh, anymore, but we'll try to hold down the fort as best as we can.
All right, we still have a full another hour coming up for you here on Sports Nightly. We're going to hear from Allison Widener, an update on her injury and the role that she's still going to play uh, for this Husker women's basketball team, her journey from Humphrey, Nebraska to Lincoln, Nebraska. We're going to get a track and field perspective of some of these track guys that Husker football has signed with uh, Britton Emanuel. So all that coming up here in hour number two. Buckle up and put the phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Keep it here from Sports Nightly. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Families who travel to Nebraska's only Ronald McDonald House are facing extremely uncomfortable situations. Their child is sick in an unfamiliar city, unsure of how to handle it all. But when they walk in the Ronald McDonald House, they can find comfort in the little things. A quiet moment away from the bombardment of beeps and buzzes in a hospital room. The taste of a home-cooked meal. A calming voice saying it'll be okay. Help us provide the little things that make a big difference. Support a one-night stay for a family in need by visiting rmhcomaha.org slash Huskers. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Michelob Ultra, the perfect balance of taste and refreshment and only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. While some seed companies put a greater stake in stock prices and anonymous shareholders, Rob Seco knows that what's important to you hits closer to home. That's why you'll find we're focused on your needs. With a simplicity that makes us easy to do business with, a relationship that makes it easy to connect with anyone in the company, and the technology, traits, and genetics you need from any source. Put your stock in the company that puts you first. Rob Seco.
Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. I believe that, like, I want to... I want to help guys get better. And so to do that, you have to have players who want that, who want to wake up every day and just work and grind. And so um, that's all really important to me. Uh, if we have the core of our team that's like that, we'll be hard to beat. Inside for Walker, get past left side. Bryden Baca, Wiltshire puts it up. Got it! Three ball. C.J. Wiltshire, another CVA three. And that ball was just popping around. Just great movement. Shelly to throw it in baseline left. Into Markowski, back to Jazz. Three pointer shoot. Betcha! In the deep left corner. Off the screen assist from Markowski. Walker in the back corner will bring it across the line with a pass to Gary. Gary attacks the rim. Jam over with a right hand. A tomahawk dunk by Gary. And the Huskers with a 41 to 24 lead. And there is our first Interstate Bank play of the game. Fourth series for Nebraska. Hyvie around a Mendelssohn screen. Deep right side Izzy. Boards three. You betcha. That's a Central Valley egg three from Izzy Ford off the assist from Hyvie. Stand up, Husker fans. This is a great win for Nebraska. They knock off previously undefeated Kansas. Their second win over a top 20 team this year. And the Huskers in three overtimes defeat Kansas 85-79 to tonight in Lincoln. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. Welcome back into our number two of Sports Sightly. I'm Jessica Cootie, Greg Sharp, out for the next couple of nights. But we have, uh, well, another hour here tonight and a full two-hour show for you coming up for you tomorrow night. And lots of fun stuff planned for you here over the next hour and then two hours tomorrow night. Our Sports Sightly hotline is brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime. With 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned, you can always find what you're looking for with Woodhouse. And speaking of our Woodhouse family hotline, Carla sends in a text. Thanks so much for this segment with Tim, but I missed where he said he'll be working. Please let us know. He's getting out of radio. He's going to be working at a bank up there in Omaha. But she goes on and said, I enjoyed when Tim and Andrew were a part of the segments and discussion. Two fine young men. Thanks, Carla. That was so nice, Carla. Appreciate you um, uh, sending that text in. You are one fine texter. We, we love it when you text in. And by the way, she also texts in, Andrew, I vote for you to take over the ticker. You would do a terrific job. Come on, Andrew. Andrew, there's another vote for you to take over the ticker. So it's your time, buddy. It is your time. All right, we have um, a fun interview coming up for you right now. Allison Widener is um, certainly has become a fan favorite, a sophomore on the women's basketball team. Just a heartbreaking, heartbreaking to see her go down in the game against Kansas. She's out for the rest of the season. And in fact, um, Amy Williams said on her show the other night about she she was asked what was the most difficult part of the job and she said seeing those injuries like that uh, you know someone that has worked so hard for it and and has fought so hard for it and it means so much to them to to see that happen but Allison Weiner will no doubt be one of those players that will come out better for it she's been she has such a great attitude about it a great perspective on it and that's you know first and foremost uh, the number one battle so I had a chance to have her come in I've started these series of conversations for the podcast with women's basketball players and she's one of the ones that I really wanted to talk to but uh, you know after the injury I didn't know if I, I would get to but the staff said she's still going to play a very very important role for this team this season her presence is still very much needed over there on the sideline so she came in and was able to chat about you know how she's doing and also her journey that's such an important part of her story she came from a, a small town Humphrey Nebraska to Lincoln Nebraska and so many young girls look up to her and, and see her as such an inspiration so appreciate Allison sitting down for her. here is this conversation with Allison Widener how you doing so many fans want to know how are you doing I'm doing good um, Definitely could be better, but um, just working through it, grinding through it, and you know I got a fantastic team behind me and community with between Lincoln and Humphrey um, that has my back. So yeah, which we're gonna talk all, about all of that. But when you initially put out uh, your tweet and the response from fans, and then you know even when you went down in the game, what did that mean to you? It was pretty overwhelming, I, I imagine. How many people were reaching out and and um, you know uh, replying to you on social media and all of that. Yeah, it was definitely overwhelming, and I just really appreciated it. Um, it really lifted my spirits and, and just made me realize how many people I have behind me. 
How motivating is that knowing, you know, coming off an injury and knowing the process that's ahead? It's got to be, uh, give you some fire knowing that there are so many people behind you. Yeah, I definitely have a lot of fire behind me. And, you know, with my teammates, they always keep me motivated. And I just want to continue to push forward for them. And so, yeah, that's what motivates me. Well, let's go back to the game you were injured and the triple overtime win over Kansas. They come in, a, a top 20 team had not been beaten, and you go down and, you know, you come back onto the bench, but everybody that talked after the game, Coach Williams, the team, were all saying how much they wanted to win it for you. What did that mean to you? Yeah, that made me pretty emotional, um, just knowing that how, how tight-knit our, our team is and knowing that they would uh, want to get that win for me, and I just... It made me really happy, and I was really proud of them. What was it like seeing them, you know, pull out that one in the way that they fought there? Yeah, uh, I was getting pretty excited on the bench, and I kept wanting to stand up, but I couldn't. And uh, I just really wanted them to get that win because uh, we had fought so hard for it, and I thought they really deserved it. What does it say about this team that, I mean, again, you, you talked about it, how close that you guys are, and, and they all want to do this for you now, and you're, you're kind of their inspiration now. Yeah, um, just no matter what, if someone goes down, we always want to do it for them. And, you know, with me being in that position, uh, and uh, the best thing I can do is continue to push forward for them and continue to cheer them on and be their biggest cheerleader um, because, you know, that's just what we do. We're like sisters, so we just continue to do everything for each other. When I had talked to the staff about the series and who to talk to next, uh, you were somebody that they recommended because you still have a role to play on this team. What does that role look like now? Um, I'm definitely going to have to step up and be more of a vocal leader um, and just pour as much energy as I can from the sidelines and just continue to cheer them on. There's been a couple of players that have had to step up in your absence. You, you, you talked about that, like whoever goes down, the next one up. But let's start with the freshman, Callan Hake, who's really played well these last couple of games. Yeah, I'm extremely proud of her. Uh, she's just playing with so much confidence right now, and I just hope that continues. Uh, she's been killing it, and I've just been so excited for her. These, uh, for, well, the two freshmen, Maggie Mendelson too, uh, what has she provided as well since she's been back from volleyball? Uh, she's provided, like, an extra body. We don't have a, a whole lot of posts. And, um, you know, she's just tall, like, extremely tall. And she provides uh, great opportunities for rebounding and defense and uh, does a very good job at it. What can you say about these freshmen? I know you had talked about... Uh, the way that the upperclassmen welcomed you in and, and the way that now these freshmen are coming in and, and trying to make an impact and they seem to be really welcomed and, and you guys really seem to welcome them with open arms. Yeah, for sure. Um, they're the sweetest girls and they make uh, practice and everything so much fun and they work extremely hard and it's, it's a really awesome to see that their hard work is paying off and um, showing in games. Another person that's uh, also filling a, a bigger role too, Kendall Moriarty, your bestie. How, how about her and, and the way she stepped up? Yeah, um, I'm really proud of uh, Kendall. Uh, she's done a lot of shooting before practice, and I see her putting all this work in, um, continue to do stuff on the side, um, not just in practice. And to see her shooting the ball so well and it paying off, it makes me really happy. And I just continue to push her to play with the confidence and, and do what she does best. So. That's awesome. Well, I wanted to talk about uh, your teammates, but also your journey, too. And this really um, stood out to me when you had put out your tweet about coming back and you're going to be better than ever. I forgot exactly what you said, but there was a, a response that really stood out to me. It's from Kip, Kip Jeffries, and he said, My daughter plays in Class D2, and you are such an inspiration to all of those players playing in small schools. How much does that, uh, you know, do you keep that in mind, too, of, of how many girls, young girls are watching you and that maybe think they didn't have the same opportunities as, as others? Yeah, um, you know, I never forget where I came from. I came from Humphrey, Nebraska, a small town, and growing up, I just thought I didn't have a lot of opportunities either, and I just, you know, being in the position that I am now, uh, I'm really proud of myself, and I'm, I'm really grateful that all these girls have an opportunity to look up for me, and I can continue to do things for them. What went into that, though? I mean, because I know it wasn't easy. I talked to your parents back at uh, the NCAA tournament, and they had told me about how they were trying to figure out how to drive you three hours to AAU ball and, and all the things that had to be done for you to be able to play basketball. So from your perspective, what went into you being able to, to play at this level? Yeah, uh, my parents made a lot of sacrifices for me, and I'm really grateful for it. And even so, my brothers drove me sometimes. Um, but so, yeah, I'd have to go to track practice and, like, do my own workout and run, like, six 400s just back to back to back and then get in the car, drive three hours to Council Bluffs for practice, and then 
do my homework on the road um, at some point, either on the way there or on the way back, and then basically go to sleep and do that three times a week. Wow, why? What, what motivated you? What inspired you there? Um, I played for Nebraska Attack, and after my first tournament with them, I had probably about 20-plus phone calls with colleges um, just after my first tournament, and I just realized, like, wow, I, I do have what it takes, and so that's what motivated me. So was that then when you started playing there, that's when you knew, or was there, I mean, you always had the dream, right, to, mm -hmm. to play at this level? Yeah, I always had the dream, and I would go to these tournaments with, my mom was my coach in grade school, and uh, we would just go to these tournaments in, like, Sioux Falls and stuff, and people would talk about me a little bit but I just didn't know like if I really had what it what it took and um, then when I started playing for Nebraska Attack uh, and all these phone calls started that's when I realized like let's do this like I got what it takes. Speaking of that Maddie Kroll when she uh, committed to play here she mentioned you you guys were teammates right and, and she talked about how much she was a fan of your game. Uh, how much are you a fan of her game? Yeah so <laughs> I was in my first year at Nebraska Tech, and she was a year older than me, and I ended up playing uh, in the age group above me, so I played with her. And I was just this new kid. They all knew each other. I had no idea, but Maddie, like, pulled me in, welcomed me in, and was just awesome. And we played so well off each other, and I'm just a huge fan of how tough and gritty she is, and, um, you know, she's willing to do anything for the team, so... You're going to get to play with her again, but what was it like to be reunited in a Nebraska uniform with her? It was really special. I was really excited for it. You'd uh, mentioned your brothers, too, and I'll never forget this. After one of the games last year, you're a true freshman, and, and I talked about, you know, how are you able to do some of the things you're doing? Well, I grew up with two brothers on the driveway that basically didn't allow me to call fouls and all that. But you, were, you knew how to take some physical hits. And so tell us about that and, and how, that, how that shaped you into the player you became. Yeah, growing up with two older brothers is definitely a competitive household, and we competed in everything, whether it was folding laundry or just going one-on-one -on -one in the in the shed and stuff, and uh, a lot of elbows were thrown, and we wrestled a lot, and uh, I'm so competitive, I wanted to beat them in everything, and so that's just kind of where that started. They didn't take it easy on you, right? Not at all. I would go up to the house crying and <laughs> tell my parents that they weren't taking it easy, and they're like, if you want to compete with the boys, you got to be able to handle it, so... Yeah, my parents didn't take it easy on me either. I'm sure there were times you're like, what am I doing? But how thankful are you for that now? I'm extremely thankful. Um, it's just kind of the way I play the game now. I play, I leave 110% out there, and it all stems from my brothers and my parents. Why basketball? Um, well, growing up with two older brothers, it's basketball or football. And so um, we would spend some days running routes in the yard for my brother, and then some days we'd go to the shop, play one-on-one, -on -one, and, and that's just where it started. In, in basketball, I just realized that there's so many ways you can contribute, and it's not just from scoring, um, whether it's rebounding, assisting the ball, or just being a lockdown defender. There's just so many ways to contribute. That's awesome. Well, Humphrey, Nebraska, they're set to retire your jersey. Tell us about that. I mean, what was that phone call like when they're like, hey, we're going we're gonna to honor you and, and retire your jersey? Yeah, uh, my coach called me, and I was like, are you, are you serious? Like, is this for real? And he was like, yeah. And, and I don't know, it's just, I was overwhelmed. I was super thankful, and um, I can't wait for it to be done. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's been pushed back a few times because of weather, but, um, you know, how special is that? I mean, I know probably we'll sink in a little bit more after, but to know, you know, it shaped you, and you talk about how much that, that support system means to you. So to go down in, in history in that way, and the way that, that they're going to honor you, what does that mean to you? It means a lot. I, d I don't even know if I can put it into words. Uh, just seeing all the Humphrey fans come, like, support me throughout my high school career and then continue to support me and see them in the, in the stands at PBA is just crazy, and I, it means so much to me, more than they'll ever know. And um, it, some of them even came after I got hurt to the Michigan game, which is awesome, and I just really appreciate it. Okay, so um, if... There's some parents or some little girls listening in, and, and I just read the tweet from, from Kip Jeffries talking about how his, his daughter sees you as an inspiration. What advice do you give for some of these, these players that are playing at small schools that have been told, hey, you're not going to be able to get seen, you're not going to be able to go play Division One? Um, you definitely got to get out there and go to some tournaments and make sure that you're seen. Um, that's the, bi the biggest thing that helped me was just getting some exposure and then just continuing to work hard. And, you know, I let those comments kind of fuel me, like, you're not going to make it. You're from a small town. Like, you won't get noticed. And that's just kind of what ins like, inspired me and fueled me to just prove everyone wrong. 
So can you take me back to when you get the offer from Nebraska? Then that had to be a huge moment for you and your family. Yep, I remember sitting in the office and Coach Williams offered me and my mom was crying because she was so happy. And I was just sitting there like, you know, trying to be mellow, pretty cool about it. And my mom's like tapping me, like, be excited. And I was like, I am excited, but I don't want to freak out in front of all of them. But yeah, um, Nebraska's always been my dream school. So to finally hear those words and get the offer was just awesome. All right, last thing I got for you, because uh, we're, we're starting to promote this thing heavy. It started back in the summer when I had Coach Williams on for our Title IX podcast. And she talked about growing the game and continuing to, to grow the crowds inside Pinnacle Bank Arena, which is already fantastic, but there's never been a sellout mm -hmm. inside PBA. So coming up Saturday, February 18th, 1 o'clock against Iowa, we have uh, coined that the sellout game. And so we're, we're making a push to sell out Pinnacle Bank Arena for the first time for a women's basketball game. Again, you're a Nebraska kid. What would that mean to you to see Pinnacle Bank Arena sold out for your game against Iowa? Uh, I think it would be pretty incredible. I've seen PBA pretty full before, but I've never seen it sold out for a girls game. And I think that everyone would be just in shock and be pretty fired up to play. And I think uh, it'll really help us. What does that say about Nebraska women's basketball fans? If this is even a conversation that we can even have, because there's a lot of places this wouldn't be a realistic goal, but it's a goal that can actually happen here in Lincoln. Yeah, I've actually had uh, some players like on the court say, like, you guys get a very good crowd and stuff. Like, this is awesome. And it is awesome for women's sports and for women's basketball and um, getting the support. Uh, it really helps us in the games. And just we uh, get a lot of fuel from the fans and their energy, and it carries over into our game. Uh, I love my conversation with Allison Widener, a girl, a small town girl, close to my own heart. I graduated with 18 people in my graduating class, so it's always awesome to see those small town kids doing big things at their home state university. You heard us just talking about the sellout game again coming up February 18th against Iowa. We're trying to sell out Pinnacle Bank Arena for the first time for a women's basketball game. Huskers.com slash tickets. There's lots of great deals that are that are happening. If you've got a little league basketball team that you want to bring, call the ticket office, see what you can do there. But let's pack that place out and do something that's never been done here in Lincoln for this Nebraska women's basketball team that has been so much fun to watch and uh, hopefully have a, a long season ahead into the postseason here this season. All right, going to take another break here on Sports Nightly. Buckle up and put the phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Coming up next, Britton Emanuel from Nebraska Track and Field gives the perspective of bringing in these Huskers that are playing football but are also going to run track here in Lincoln. Keep it here on Sports Nightly. Hey, honey. Hey, Mom. How did Jordan's interview go? I'm not sure. Your brother isn't home yet. Oh, one sec. Someone's at the door. Are you Mrs. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. Lewis, I'm Officer Taylor. Your, your son was in a crash and has died. What? He wasn't wearing his seatbelt and was ejected from the vehicle. No. No. Someone <laughs> is counting on you to buckle up. Brought to you by NDOT Highway Safety Office. It's time for another round of Nebraska Farm Facts. If there's one thing Nebraska's known for, it's our beef. And Nebraska soybeans feed a lot of them, and even more pigs and chickens. Farmers and ranchers raise livestock and poultry to provide nutritious, affordable protein for all ages to help build muscle and maintain energy for a healthy lifestyle. Keep that in mind as you prepare all that tasty meat on your tailgate grill. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. In America, the future belongs to everyone. So we designed the Ford trucks of the future for everyone. Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 45 years straight. Made for performance and capability on and off-road. Because the trucks of the future aren't designed for a few. They're built for America. Ford F-Series, drive one today. Based on 1977 to 2021 calendar year total sales. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exist to be there with you. They are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. That's why Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska is proud to sponsor Touchdowns for Teachers and ask Husker fans to nominate outstanding educators who help Nebraska students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash touchdowns for teachers. 
It's harvest special time, and you can save $3 per foot or $3,900 per quarter mile system now on a TNL pivot system. Pivots worked long hours this season battling dry weather to save top dollar corn and soybean crops. But did your pivots work like no other? If not, it's time to invest in a reliable, safe, low maintenance TNL irrigation system. Hydrostatic drives move these durable workhorses continuously across fields. So get an irrigation system that works as hard as you do. Contact TNL Irrigation, your local TNL dealer, or visit us online at TLIRR.com. TNL Irrigation Systems like no other. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Agriculture is the economic engine of the Midwest. At Acres Equipment, we dedicate ourselves to making that engine run smoothly. We supply our farmers and ranchers with quality John Deere equipment, parts, and service. We also deliver the most advanced technology and precision ag strategies to help them farm today and for the future. Acres Equipment, solutions for every field. Every single day, Central Valley Ag works with our farmers to feed the globe. When you raise food corn for CVA, you can earn an additional $25,000 per quarter section. That's $100,000 more profit for every four quarters you farm. Do the same work, raise more profit. Our planet is hungry. Together, we feed it. Learn how you can get up to a $5,000 signing bonus with a value-added grain contract at cvacoop.com. Central Valley Ag, the official co-op of Husker Nation. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus. Insurance. Employee benefits. Financial services. Farmers Mutual of Nebraska is proud to support Husker Athletics. Having a competent teammate beside you makes all the difference when it comes to protecting what matters most. With a proven track record of dependable coverage, unmatched financial strength, and a prompt claim service team right here in Nebraska, that's insurance kept local. Visit FEMNE.com to contact an agent for a quote today. Farmers Mutual of Nebraska, always alongside you. In America, the future belongs to everyone. So we designed the Ford trucks of the future for everyone. Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 45 years straight. Made for performance and capability on and off-road. Because the trucks of the future aren't designed for a few. They're built for America. Ford F-Series, drive one today. Based on 1977 to 2021 calendar year total sales. Today's play of the day comes from Nebraska. We pick it up with the local sports announcer at a Nebraska Lottery retailer. Dave enters the store. He makes a move to the checkout counter. Looks like he's going to pass. Yes, he's passing the clerk a few dollars. The clerk takes the handoff and spins around. It looks like he's placed the scratch tickets on the counter. And now Dave has them in his hand. It's the old scratch Haruski. He scratches left. He scratches right. Oh, my. He's done it. Dave has scored a bundle of cash. Play is good. Go play. Odds vary by game. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres solutions for every field. Welcome you back to Sports Nightly. I'm Jessica Cootie, and, and we've been talking a lot about these new recruits and the new signees for Husker football. And a big storyline this past signing class was how Matt Roll and his staff, they really like track guys and they like that speed. And, you know, the come to find out that they, the Husker football staff and then also the Husker track and field staff came together to recruit a couple of these guys, and they're actually working together to recruit some guys in the future, in, in the 2024 class. And so it's been a good team already working together. And, yeah, so two of those guys that are going to play both football and run track, Jalen Lloyd, Bryce Turner. And so wanted to get the perspective of the track and field side of things. So had a chance to sit down with Brenton Emanuel, the assistant coach with track and field, to get his perspective on, on what those two guys bring and, and what it's been like working with the Husker football staff. 
Let's uh, start with Bryce Turner. I mean, this kid is fast. He can fly. You've been recruiting him for a while. Yeah, so started in late spring, went down there, um, was recruiting just in general, saw his name pop up, kind of, you know, got in, talk, got in contact with him, um, went down and did a visit in July and kind of hit it off with him. He's a really humble kid, um, takes care of his siblings, you know, and just a great kid. And he's very, you know, for a 10 2 guy, he's pretty elite, one of the best in the country on the track. You would never know it. He's so he's so humble and kind of hit it off and just kind of stayed in contact with him all all fall, and he really worked out with football towards the end. So it's been a great great recruitment for us. Yeah, it's awesome. So he's a state champion in the 100 and the 200. Can you break down his times and where what that is, where that stands, and potentially the Big Ten and the country, all of that? Absolutely. So you know he, he's run 10 25 and 20.9. Typically, in the Big Ten, to make a final in the 100, you have to run 10-3 or faster. So he's already, as a junior high school, he's going to score in the Big Ten. 20.9 wow. is going to get you in the final, probably 7th or 8th. Again, that's as a junior. Um, so he's a potentially one of the best recruits ever come step on the track for us. Um, our school record is 10-16, I believe it's in the 100, and 20.1. So he's not too far off from both of those. You look at that as a junior. Um, he, this kid's just fast. You know, I think he's going to be someone, you know, I've heard from coaches at the University of Texas and other schools, this could be one of the best track kids in the country. He could be someone that could break sub-10 and the 100, which is really hard to do. You know, as you, as you get to 10-2, running 10-1 and 10-0 oh is hard to continue to get that fast. You know, and he's just a baby in, in track and field, you know, in track and field terms. Wow. A lot of people want to talk about Texas being a hotbed for high school football, but it is a hotbed for track, right? It, it is amazing for track. You have kids that don't make the state meet that go on to be All-Americans national champions. So wow. it's a place that, you know, for Nebraska has always been really good for us um, over the years. And I wanted to make sure that we established that, you know, that pipeline again. And so as well as our other coaches, Coach Johnson, um, our new jumps coach, is, uh, he coached on them for five years, coaching football and stuff like that. So he has a good pipeline, pipeline in Dallas. Um, as well as Houston. So we're just going to try to use that pipeline as much as possible because it's a great state. It's fast. I mean, they, they run year-round. They train year-round. So it's, it's about a bunch of great kids, male and female, down there. So you were recruiting Bryce. He said he wanted to play football, too. So then you reached out to this new staff. Yep. How did that work? So I actually reached out to the previous staff a little bit. And they, you know, I think because of the changes around here, didn't, didn't know what was going to happen. Um, reached out to Coach Cooper, talked to him. Um, he's like, hey, send me his video. You know, typical, you know, I think, Earning each other's trust. You know, obviously their coaches and student staff has done really well where they've been, but they don't know me very well. And so I said, hey, here's a video of a kid that I've been recruiting. He won state. He's really fast. Check out his football video coach. He said, all right, I'll check it out. Within five minutes, he's like, send me his number. We're going to offer this kid. And he's like, will this kid commit immediately? I said, yeah, I think he would. He wants to play football and run track. And we were the only school really at this level that was recruiting him like that. And so within 20 minutes, Bryce was offered committed. It was amazing. I started laughing. I was talking to the head coach and our jumps coach about it because I wanted this to happen like a while ago, but I knew football had to be involved. And for it to happen within 20 minutes, for him getting offered and committed, it was amazing. You what know? was your first conversation like with him after he committed? And uh... He's, He was so thankful. <laughs> so thankful. He called me and he said, well, I talked to him um, right after he committed. I said, Bryce, you know, I'm so happy that you're a Husker finally. You know, I told you I was going to take care of you and it worked out. Um, and he's just like, coach, thank you. I wouldn't be here without you. Um, I really appreciate everything you've done for me and staying by me the, throughout this whole recruitment process. And so that really warmed my heart, you know, knowing that I told Oswald to come through for him and I did. And then, too, that he's so appreciative of the opportunity. And they were here this past weekend. Unfortunately, we're in a dead period, so I couldn't even see him. Um, but I was texting with him and his, and his uncle um, and his family and stuff like that. And they were so excited to be here. And so he's just so grateful for this opportunity. He's just a great kid, to be honest with you. We've heard a lot from this new coaching staff about recruiting track guys and they, the speed. And, and they've done it before and at every stop they've been. How exciting is it for you guys as a staff to, to know that you could potentially continue to work with them? I mean, it's awesome. First thing we did when Coach Will was hired, obviously, we know as a football coach, he's great. Um, we talked to the track coach at Baylor, and at one time when, when he was at Baylor, he had six starters running track, wow. going track and field. And so right there, you can see his commitment to that. Um, and having a staff, like I've worked with other staffs, that say, oh, we wanna, want you to help out. But typically, they use us to win the recruitment process, then we never see the kid ever again. Where here, there's proof in the work, in the body of work, where these let kids go out and run track. And so from a standpoint, you know, talking to those guys, talked to them last night about another kid, um, a kid for a 2024 class. I think it's going to be a, a good relationship for the future, for not only for football, but also for track and field, where you have two new head coaches taking over programs that are very storied. Um, I can just see a lot of good success on both sides of the, of the fence. You know, football is going, to, is going to do great, and track, we're trending upwards. Um, and, then, and then having kids that can do both is going to make our, our school be more marketable for those dual sport athletes. All right, Jalen Lloyd, a, a Nebraska kid, he's a legacy. His mom 
was an absolute all-star, is all-American. Uh, Dahlia Ingram Lloyd, how excited were you guys uh, to get him committed too? Very excited. Um, that's been a long, long process to be honest with you. Um, a couple different home visits, uh, a lot of different coaches talking. I think we've counted at least five different head coaches have talked to him since his recruitment started from Nebraska. Wow. So yeah, three in football, two in track. Uh, we actually offered early in September, uh, but again for him, coming to Nebraska was about playing football. You know, I think there's something in the in the water in Nebraska <laughs> when it comes to the football program, obviously, where people they want to play and they want to put on that jersey, and so. For him, he wanted that commitment from them. And I, I don't know what happened on that side of the fence, but I know when Coach Rule got the job, Jalen was supposed to make his commitment um, to the university that Saturday. Coach Rule gets the job. He calls off his commitment. We were able to talk to them again. Football's calling me like, hey, do you guys want this kid? Yes, he's a 25-foot long jumper, one of the best in the country, not the best in the country. Um, yes, we do want this kid. And so we were able to kind of figure out a plan of how to approach this. And we, myself, our head coach, Justin St. Clair, our jumps coach, uh, Vincent Johnson, went down to see him um, about maybe a week and a half ago um, to talk to him about the track side of things. And prior to that, Coach Johnson and I went and talked to our, the strength coach for football and said, hey, this is how the plan is going to be for him to be successful here and doing both sports. And so right off the bat, they've been so good football, the strength conditioning and the, this, the whole assistant coaches of communicating. And be on the same page. You know, I think that's been really easy for us. And then to get Jalen, a home state talent, he's the best jumper in the country. And we almost let him walk out the state, not necessarily on purpose, but just because of how things were going with the kind of the previous staff. And it was like, this is not a good situation for us. We want to keep protect our house. We want to protect our homeland. And I think you can tell with the football class with Malachi, Jalen, and then we also have the kid that got third in the 200 to those two guys, or he won the 200 actually, um, was fifth in the 100 to those two guys. Um, Jack Galogli um, is from Nebraska. So we have the three top sprinters and athletes in track and field that are coming wow. here to do, to do, to, to play for Nebraska, run for Nebraska. It's pretty amazing, I think, that our commitment from our, both of our staffs is so dedicated to keeping protecting our house, you know. That's amazing. Yeah, I was, so Jalen was a, a national champion in the long jump at the Nike Outdoor Nationals. That's a huge deal, right? It is a huge deal. That is the top meet you want to be at. That's where the best of the best is. Um, it's probably the second best meet to U20 Worlds. I, mean, I think Jalen probably could have gone to that had he not want to play football this fall because that was in August. And so um, what he's been able to do, you know, it's obviously his mom, he has great genes. His mom was a phenomenal athlete. Dad, um, there's a joke about his dad. I'm not going to say it because it, it was kind of funny, but I'll keep it in between our, our staff and him. But his dad is a, good, is a great coach as well. His dad has been there from day one coaching him. And I think that was pretty cool that his mom kind of takes the mom role and dad is able to coach him and develop him really well. And so to have a guy that's probably, you know, easily top two in the country, maybe top five in the world, coming out of high school, coming to Nebraska. I think that says a lot about where the program is headed for both sides. And Dahlia, again, the Nebraska track and field for the women's side has got a long history. And so, Absolutely. you know, I, I don't know if people realize if they're just a football fan that how big of a role she probably played in a, you talk about story tradition, and especially for women's sports, I mean, Absolutely. it's kind of like the first that really got it going here. Yeah, you talked to her, the first thing she said, you know, I'm Dahlia Ingram, I'm Jalen's mom, nine-time All-American from Nebraska. <laughs> nine-time, uh, wow. Nine-time All-American. You know, and obviously she's a great person, so she's someone that we want to be a part of this program. And I think it's, it's important for us as a track and field staff to continue, and what Coach, Coach, Coach St. Clair said is like, get the alumni back involved. And now having one of the biggest dogs that have been out there in Dahlia Ingram coming back to our program and with her son is gonna be huge for connecting with the alumni again and just getting them around um, and being, having them excited because now her kids out there, her baby boys out there jumping for us and playing football on Saturday. So it's gonna be a pretty cool, um, just bringing alumni together again for the track and field staff and also for the women's program to have someone like that around to see like this is what she did and look at her life now she's very successful in Omaha her son's here and so I think it's be really good for just people to just be able to talk to her and I mean she's one of the goats of Nebraska track and field. So you're you're talking these two kids right here especially Bryce Turner, Jalen Wynn could come in and immediately make an impact for Nebraska track and field. Absolutely. I think, you know, in the long jump, Jalen will be one of the top guys in the conference um, in long and triple. I think Coach Johnson will be able to kind of figure out what he can do with him and what events are best for him. Um, obviously, Bryce um, is going to be a great sprinter right off the bat. Two guys that could be a part of our relay. You know, we also signed a kid that ran 10-2 from Kansas. So the joke was, like, how many 10-2 guys can you guys get in Nebraska in one recruiting class? And can't get enough, right? No, we can't get enough. <laughs> we, we can never have enough 10-2 guys around here. Um, but those guys could be really big staples for, you know, for this, for our, our track and field program. And I think the class we had this past year, we have a guy from Texas that ran 20.66 that's here now as a freshman. Um, Nebraska's sprints and hurdles should be pretty good for the, for the future.
It's been a while since you've had a football guy run track or track guy uh, play football. Probably going to figure it out as you go. I know we had a, a volleyball player, Maggie M uh, Mendelson, that played volleyball and basketball, but you talked about the communication's already there and you guys are working together so well. What will it potentially look like for these guys, or will it, is it still a work in progress? Well, I think it's still a work in progress. Obviously, they're still doing re their recruiting, but we already kind of talked to the strength and conditioning because that's one of the most important things because during the off season for football, he kind of controls all the workouts. And so we've kind of talked briefly about, you know, making sure when they're in track, they do track stuff. When they're in football, they do football stuff. Um, if they're up for a job, to make sure that they have enough of, you know, tape for them to, to be fighting for a starting job. Um, but I think, you know, we're going to figure out the kind of nuts and bolts as we kind of figure it out. But I think we're, from a recruiting standpoint, we're killing it. Because all of us on our staff, we're committed to winning. Football is definitely committed to winning. And so that's, that's the biggest, that's one of the biggest battles right there, having the same mindset of what we want to do. Football wants to be national championship, you know, contenders. So do we in track and field. And so when you have two staffs that are really competitive that also work together, that's a scary thing right there. Absolutely. You mentioned the word competitive because I asked Marcus Satterf Satterfield about it, the offensive coordinator, and he's, uh, you know, about why they're okay with the track and field because some coaches aren't. He said, we want competitors. If they're going out there and competing, that that's what we want. I, I got to imagine you guys feel the same way with them playing football. Absolutely. You know, and I think all of our coaching, you know, Coach St. Clair, Coach Johnson, and myself, all had guys to do, to do both. And so we understand we're not going to take away from what they're doing on the football field. We're only going to make them faster and better and stronger when they go back. And we want to be competitive. We want to be in, we want to, you know, track and field has had won like 79 conference championships or something like that, something ridiculous. Um, we want to continue that that history and that and just continue that that brand of winning. And so we want guys that want to win. We don't, we don't want to get show up, you know, fight for second, third place. We want, we want to be top dog, you know, and that's that's a goal. I think football feels the same way. So right there, you, ha you're, you have two staff recruiting the same type of animal, competitive, you know, competitive, fast people. Love it, love it. How are, how are the new facilities coming up? They're going, they're just going pretty well. Uh, we're working on the outdoor facility uh, as far as like in the stands, some of the buildings around mm -hmm. the facility, but it's going to be one of the best in the country. The ultimate goal is hopefully host the state meet here for, for Nebraska, which I think, again, there's a lot of there's great football talent here. So you have those kids coming down, seeing our track facility when, they, when they're in track season. Um, and then, you know, even football has changed their tour. They, they stop by our indoor facility every single time now to show the football, football, football guys what we're, what we're working with. And that, that's going to help us even more, knowing that we have one of the only uh, bank hydraulic tracks out there in the world. Um, so we have, a, I mean, here, Nebraska's facilities are top notch, you know, and with the new football facility going up and then with our track facility that's already there indoor wise and what we're going to do outdoor wise is going to be a pretty amazing setup for us. Exciting stuff. Appreciate you giving your perspective because it's been a pretty unique first time we're talking about it. I know yeah. fans have been interested in it, and so we'll look forward to seeing these Huskers compete both on the track and on the football field. Right. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Really appreciate Brenton Emanuel coming in and, and giving his perspective on the track and field side of things. And yeah, it's going to be fun to see what those guys can do. And you heard how excited track and field is to see uh, what those guys can do, come in and make an immediate impact and, and be immediate contributors and, and some of the best in the country. So can't wait to see how all of that unfolds. And check out the Husker Extra Mobile app for the team at Lincoln Journal Star. It's the best place for everything Husker sports. Search the app store for Huskers Extra and download today. Your stories are all around you, and in the Lincoln Journal Star is where they come to life. Go to lincolnjournalstar.com slash story. Subscribe today and read on any digital device. More from Sports Nightly coming up right after this break. The Mazda lineup of SUVs will provide safety, performance, and capability on your journey ahead. From the three-row Mazda CX-9 to the first-ever Mazda CX-50, our sales team is ready to guide you to the SUV for your lifestyle. Shop the Omaha Metro's exclusive Mazda dealers at Woodhouse Mazda in Bellevue or Woodhouse Place Mazda. Visit us online for your next Mazda SUV at woodhousemazda.com. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Michelob Ultra, the perfect balance of taste and refreshment and only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm student government president Jake Drake with Campus News. Nebraska has the most technically advanced buildings in the Big Ten, according to an annual review of universities across the country. 
Nebraska has also saved over $85 million over the past 17 years by making long-term investments in clean, reliable energy sources, cutting-edge automation, and collaborations across campus. Greatness doesn't happen overnight. It takes time, focus, and dedication. At Shelter Insurance, we understand that because we put in the hard work and dedication for decades. And that commitment has paid off with award-winning customer service for your auto, home, and life insurance. Visit shelterinsurance.com and find an agent to help you choose the coverage you need. Shelter Insurance. We're your shield. We are your shelter. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Dear gas prices, go take a hike. Toyota is the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. The Toyota hybrid lineup brings efficiency with power, savings with style, and top-notch tech to keep you connected. Not to mention plush premium interiors and the most advanced Toyota safety features. So now you know who you're talking to. Toyota, the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. Toyota, the brand with a hybrid or electric vehicle for every driver. Toyota, the brand that helps save you money at the pump. Now, let me ask you a question, dear gas prices. You really think you can stand in the way of the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years? <laughs> Think again. Toyota Hybrids. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Based on manufacturer estimates, CY2000 through 2021 sales. As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he is so cold. The furnace is out again. SOS, he screams, and calls SOS Heating and Cooling, his favorite Luxair dealer trusted since 1950. With Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS to the rescue. Beardmore Subaru celebrates Nebraska volleyball again this season. Five national championships, 47 All-Americans, and a home sellout streak dating back to 2001. The longest streak for any women's sport in NCAA history. Beardmore Subaru has been a proud supporter of Husker volleyball for more than 10 years. Beardmore Subaru in Bellevue has the new Subaru Outback Wilderness. Loaded with off-road ready upgrades and the new Solterra, Subaru's first ever all-electric and all-wheel drive vehicle. Go Big Red. Hi, it's Sam McEwen from the Omaha World Herald. And I'm Amy Just from the Lincoln Journal Star. Hey, listen, HuskerExtra.com and the Husker Extra mobile app have the best coverage of Nebraska sports. Our reporting team shares features and analysis of all Husker sports, along with the latest recruiting news and more. Plus, Husker Extra subscribers have access to our exclusive podcast, The Showdown, where we share our latest insights and expectations. Go to HuskerExtra.com or search Husker Extra in your app store. Download and subscribe today. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall at Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Row townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres and Midwest Premier John Deere Dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres, solutions for every field. We've got a few news stories to pass along for you. Talked about this a little bit in the first hour, but a good news report coming out today regarding DeMar Hamlin, the bill safety after the scary incident during Monday night football. Uh, doctors reporting that there has been quote, remarkable improvement, and um, that the neurological condition and function is intact. So that is great news, but also doctors emphasizing that there's still a ways to go and he'll need to start breathing on his own. Taking him off a ventilator will be a cautious, gradual process, but certainly 
Good news there regarding uh, DeMar Hamlin as uh, so many thoughts and prayers have been answered after that scary ordeal on Monday night. Also, uh, out of Michigan, Jim Harbaugh, once again, rumored to go to the NFL, and he's shot those rumors down, and it's been out again. It's been trending on social media. So today, the Michigan head coach releasing a statement that he plans to expect or plans to coach the Wolverines in 2023. He said, quote, as I stated in December, while no one knows what the future holds, I expect that I will be enthusiastically coaching Michigan in 2023. So that's what Harbaugh said in his statement in regards to sticking around at Michigan. And we've got some Big Ten basketball games on. In fact, one great one on right now, but let me update you on the others. Rutgers with a win 64-50 over Maryland, Indiana, and Iowa. That should be a good one. That tips off at 8 o'clock. And right now, with 153 left in the second half, we are all tied up 66-66 between Purdue and Ohio State. Number one Purdue and number 24 Ohio State. So that is on FS1 right now. A great ball game there. We've got them up on all the TVs here inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center. And our Sports Nightly updates tonight are presented by Currency. Does your business need quick, easy, and secure financing for equipment, trucks, or trailers? All you need is Currency. Visit at GoCurrency.com for details. All right, got to take our final break, but we got we got to wrap up the show with our final segment here on Sports Nightly coming up next. Buckle up and put the phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. At Nebraska, our people will always be our greatest asset day by day. Donors give our teams the best opportunity to compete and win through their generous donations. Our vision for the future is ambitious and requires help from those who want to see Husker athletics excel at the highest level. Go big and join thousands of other Huskers Athletic Fund members with your gift today at huskers.com slash donate. While some seed companies put a greater stake in stock prices and anonymous shareholders, Rob Seco knows that what's important to you hits closer to home. That's why you'll find we're focused on your needs. With a simplicity that makes us easy to do business with, a relationship that makes it easy to connect with anyone in the company, and the technology, traits, and genetics you need from any source. Put your stock in the company that puts you first. Rob Seco. Here's Greasel, deep left corner, Gary's three, got it! Saturday, Husker Hoops doubleheader action begins with pregame coverage on the men's side against Minnesota at 10 a.m. with tip-off at 11 a.m. with Kent Pavelka and Jake Muehlheisen. On the women's side, pregame coverage with Matt Coatney and Jeff Grease begins at 12.45 p.m. with tip-off at 1 p.m. against Rutgers. Tune into your local affiliate or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app, Go Big Red. The name on the mailbox may say Smith, Myers, Baumgartner, or Johnson, but when you choose to plant with Rob Seco, it includes your name too, making you a stockholder in a company that's invested in you. With the simplicity that makes us easy to do business with, relationships that bring more to the table, the technology, traits, and genetics that take on local conditions, and people with the know-how to use it. And Rob Seco, the only stockholder we listen to is you. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Triple B Feed has the products to help your cows thrive. Whether it's weekly delivery of consumption-controlled Lumix liquid minerals with protein or Redmond natural mineral salt for livestock or humans, Triple B has you covered. Let Brian and Brad Blahorn take some of the stress out of your beef production this year. For more information and other products, visit TripleBeefeed.com. Triple B Feed, helping you and your cattle. <laughs> As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he is so cold. The furnace is out again. SOS, he screams, and calls SOS Heating and Cooling, his favorite Luxair dealer trusted since 1950. With Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS to the rescue. SOS. 
The Sports Nightly Hotline is brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime with 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned. You can always find what you're looking for with Woodhouse. And speaking of our Woodhouse Auto Family Hotline, got a couple of texts to get in before we wrap up Sports Nightly here tonight. Tim in Omaha sent this in, said, shame on me because I couldn't get it out before the end of our segment, but I wanted to say thank you to Mike Elliott for all that he's done for me and for the Huskers Radio Network. At the drop of a hat, he gave me a great opportunity to learn and grow in a new role as both a producer and a professional. He's taught me an incredible amount about the industry, our groundbreaking technology at the HRN, and how to be a consistent professional. I am very lucky and grateful to have worked with him. So that was Tim. We had a segment there and it was kind of closed out the show and so he didn't get all of his um, thoughts in there but that is Tim from Omaha again he's uh, leaving if you're just tuning in he has taken a job up in Omaha to work at a bank but I'm sure you haven't heard the last of him he will uh, be checking in on the chat calling in texting in I'm sure but Tim from Omaha appreciate all that you've done here on uh, Sports Nightly and, and for our Huskers radio network crew and John in Omaha said uh, appreciated his work for in for reference to Tim. Same, John. We all did. So, um, yeah, it's been a fun show. And Art texted in. Thanks for listening, Art. Thank you all for listening. What was the update on that score, Andrew? You got an update? I, uh, it's gone to timeout. I missed it. Okay. I'll definitely keep you updated on it. All right, we've got a good game right now in the Big Ten between Ohio State and Purdue. It's coming down to the wire. 66-66 so, um, Still 66-66 with 114 left in the second half. Who you got in the Big Ten, Andrew? If I had to pick, uh, I mean, right now I was liking Purdue, but, I mean, they are on and off with Rutgers upsetting them a few nights ago. But... I'm not too sure. I'm kind of up in the air. Do you have anything? I mean, who, prob Purdue, but I guess we'll see where the rest of the conference shakes out. But, um, yeah, it's, it's going to be fun. I had the TV show with Coach Hoiberg today, and, and we talked about that, about how it's such a gauntlet, and it is day by day, but that the non-conference certainly prepared Nebraska, he feels like, for, for what's to come here ahead in a conference play. So they're at Minnesota on Saturday and um, should be a winnable game. You got to win the ones you can, right? Because it is um, certainly <laughs> not easy to win games in the Big Ten. Oh, 100%. I'm, I'm exactly there with you. But I'm impressed from our boys. We've been putting a good fight each and every game. And this is one of the most defensively strong-minded teams that they don't give up. Our Huskers, they play to the end of the whistle and don't count them out, everybody. They work hard every day, each and every day for games and practices, and I think they still have a lot more to prove. Well, Sam in Omaha wants to know, do you have a pick for Georgia TCU yet? I am rooting hard for Max Duggan. Greg, you know, Greg Sharp is the master of all the picks. He won't even tell us who wins the week. And so we have no idea how it finished. We were supposed to do a segment tonight. He bailed on us. So we're left on the edge of our seats about where the rest of the standings are. And we're picking that game. So I don't know. I guess we'll stay tuned for picks on that one. Maybe we'll do it tomorrow night. I, I don't know. But um, I'm with you, though. I, I probably will root for TCU, but I probably won't pick TCU. Same for you, Andrew. I'm, I'm with you. I want to root for TCU, and I want them to win. But in our picks, I'm going to go Jordan. Georgia. Well, there you go. There's a preview of our picks. I'm segment. spilling the beans. Uh, Revenge Tour, are you going to finish in second place? So I heard this championship game. For me, we can add 10 points <laughs> if I get it correct. So um, I think that could maybe show a little different results. All right. Well, it's been a fun show. Appreciate everyone that was a part. Had lots of moving parts, lots of uh, people that jumped in to help me out here as I flew solo here tonight. So appreciate all of our guests today. Also, Widener, Jeremiah Searles. Brenton Emanuel, and appreciate Andrew for producing the show for us. Mike is back there as well. And Tim Mulhaup, producer Tim, appreciate all you've done for the Huskers Radio Network and for spending some time with us here on Sports Nightly. First Interstate Bank, built for you. Learn more at www.firstinterstatebank.com for FDIC. Full show, full two-hour show coming up for you tomorrow night, Friday night, right here on Sports Nightly. Have a great night, everybody. Hit us up on the text line, text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. I'm University of Nebraska-Lincoln student Hannah Fahm with Campus News. 
Students from Nebraska's Johnny Carson Center for Emerging Media Arts helped create visual effects for the Star Wars TV series Obi-Wan Kenobi. This opportunity came from a three-month internship with Lola VFX, a visual effects firm in Los Angeles. This internship transitioned to employment, with Huskers also creating effects for the superhero movie Thor, Love and Thunder. There is no place like Nebraska, and there is no place that treats you like your home like Sap Brothers. For over 50 years, Sap Brothers has fueled America's heartland and has been a reliable partner to local farms, businesses, and Huskers fans across Nebraska, providing the highest quality fuel, lubricants, and propane, servicing your farming equipment, and welcoming guests into our travel centers. Visit www.sapbros.net. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Michelob Ultra, the perfect balance of taste and refreshment and only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. While some seed companies put a greater stake in stock prices and anonymous shareholders, Rob Seco knows that what's important to you hits closer to home. That's why you'll find we're focused on your needs. With a simplicity that makes us easy to do business with, a relationship that makes it easy to connect with anyone in the company, and the technology, traits, and genetics you need from any source. Put your stock in the company that puts you first. Rob Seco.